Hi students, I'll try in this educational video to technologically introduce the membrane analysis applied to axisymmetric shells, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. Well, now I'll talk about the doubly curved shell model. So let's consider an axis of revolution denoted here by Z. And this axis has an origin denoted by O. And let's consider a meridian. What does it mean a meridian? A meridian can be simply seen as a curve that the revolution around the axis of revolution Z will induce the doubly curved shell. Now let's consider a parallel of latitude. What does it mean a parallel of latitude? A parallel of latitude is a curve located at a horizontal plane uh, distant by distance Z from the origin O. And in this uh, horizontal plane, I can define the radial distance r as it is depicted by the figure or by the model that you see now in this slide. Now, let's consider a second parallel of latitude located at a second horizontal plane located at uh, a distance dz from the first horizontal plane. Now, the portion of shell located between two meridians and two parallel of latitudes, as it is depicted here in red, will be investigated as an elementary doubly curved shell. This elementary doubly curved shell is located by theta and d theta in the theta direction, which is the latitude direction. And also it is located by phi and d phi in the phi direction, which is the longitude direction d theta and d phi are considered small in order to induce an infinitesimal doubly curved shell. The two principal curvatures of this infinitesimal doubly curved shell have the radius r1 as the radius of the first principal curvature and the radius r2 as the radius of the second principal curvature as it is depicted by the model that you see now in this slide. Now I'll talk about the acting forces model. So we have our infinitesimal doubly curved shell with d theta and d phi as dimensions. The forces acting on this infinitesimal doubly curved shell are the loading w and the membrane forces n. The loading w have three components, w, r, as the radial component, W theta as the latitude component, and W phi as the longitude component. And for the membrane forces, we have N theta uh, applied as it is depicted now in this slide. And on the other side, we have N theta plus the variation of N theta along the latitude direction. And we have n phi. On the other side, we have n phi plus the variation of n phi along the longitude direction. And we have the first twisting membrane force n theta phi. And on the other side, we have n theta phi plus the variation of n theta phi along the latitude direction. And we have the second uh, twisting membrane force denoted by n phi theta. And in the other side, we have n phi theta plus the variation of n phi theta along the longitude direction. Now I'll talk about the equilibrium equation. So based on the model of acting forces, if we apply the equilibrium of forces in the longitude direction, we obtain the equilibrium equation in the phi direction as it is depicted by the formula that you see now in this slide. If we apply the equilibrium of forces in the latitude direction, we obtain the equilibrium equation in the theta direction as it is depicted by the formula that you see now in this slide. And uh, if we apply the equilibrium of forces along the radial uh, direction, we will obtain the equilibrium equation in the R direction as it is depicted by the formula that you see in this slide. Now I'll talk about the simplification of equilibrium equations in the axisymmetric condition. So we have our three equilibrium equations in the phi, theta, and r directions. 
and in the axisymmetric condition we have n theta phi equal to n phi theta equal to zero we have a loading independent of theta and we have a deformation independent of theta so you can easily notice that uh, under this uh, axisymmetric condition the equilibrium equation along the theta direction will vanish and the three equilibrium equations will be simplified into two equilibrium equations the one along the phi direction and the one along the radial direction now uh, i'll talk about the expressions of membrane forces in axisymmetric conditions so based always on the same model and as i said just before we have a twisting membrane forces in theta phi equal to m phi theta equal to zero and based on the two remaining equilibrium equations along phi and r direction we can determine the expression of the membrane force in phi and the membrane force in theta using the formula that you see now in this slide that's all for this educational video please if you have any suggestions remarks or questions please mention it in the comments thank you very much for your attention